Okay, so raise your hand if you can name the three older Kardashian sisters. Right, yeah, okay. Now put your hands down and raise your hand if you can name our <coughs> California senators. All right, yeah, okay. <laughs> Significantly less people raising your hands for your California senators, and we only have two. So to some people, that can be outrageously eye-opening. But there's this thing called celebrity worship, which a lot of people do and they don't even think about it. Essentially, celebrity worship may not be necessarily a cult, but it's closer to following the steps of what your favorite celebrities are doing, making it a part of your daily routine to see what's going on with your favorite celebrity. So uh, as a new member of the voting community, I found I knew very little about the place I lived in. I couldn't name the mayor of the city I'm living in. But I found that like many of you, I was able to quickly dispense information about celebrities. Um, who we idolize can take a toll on our non-celebrity awareness, but why we choose to idolize them can be inspiring or even give us ideas of how to make our lives more ideal or to give us inspiration of what we would want to do in our future. So first, I'm going to tell you how we can see, how we can physically see how invested we are in the culture of celebrities. Then I'll tell you how knowing your celebrities might not be all that bad before finally telling you how we can make a transition from worshiping stars to respecting them for their work and gains instead. So first, where do we see celebrity life in our lives? One of the biggest culprits is in the tabloids, in the magazines at the supermarket. Not once have I seen a magazine like National Geographic on my way out of the market, but it's not uncommon to see the same embarrassing photo of a star on multiple different magazines with these shocking capitalized headlines for you to read them. And it's not just the tabloids that want you to read them, but also in your morning news. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, also on your morning news, they want you to read, uh, we have things like celebrity birthdays every morning or, uh, or like televised royal weddings. And it makes sense that we know so much about things like Jessica Simpson's mom jeans or Taylor Swift's uh, newest ex-boyfriend and her next hit single. Because it's, it's simply something that's easier to wake up to. It's more comforting than hearing about ISIS Christ ISIS crisis, and uh, it's just something we would rather see in the morning, and it's just more comforting to know. Um, now, does that make it the media's fault that we know more about celebrities than, say, our environment? According to an article in Psychology Today, it's not necessarily the media. There's also this mental stimulation that we get from seeing beautiful faces, such as George Clooney or Emma Watson. By seeing their faces, we get a pleasing chemical release in our brains, which makes us want to see them even more making us want to Google pictures of them or continue reading magazines of their photoshopped and body sprayed makeup faces. And because it's not necessarily what we see every day. Almost every star can be gorgeous because they have the money to do it. And not everybody in life can do that. So it, it makes us want to look to them for, uh, for makeup and things like that. Uh, okay, so it's, uh, it sounds really negative to say celebrity worship. But uh, it can also have a really inspiring effect, such as knowing, uh, according to Helen Fisher, an anthropologist at Rutgers University, she says that stars help us through our toughest times. By seeing another star struggle and seeing how they can go all the way from the bottom to the top, such as Eminem or Slim Shady or Marshall Mathers, uh, it can be inspiring to us. Marshall Mathers was born in St. Joseph, Missouri, and he never lived in the same house for more than a year until he was 11 years old. At the age of 17, he dropped out of high school and took on multiple part-time jobs to help his mother pay the rent, writing lyrics and joining rap groups in his spare time. So Marshall Mathers started at the very bottom, in the middle of Missouri, which sounds a lot like misery, which is... So, <laughs> and now we can see him as one of the most well-known rappers in the industry, being a millionaire and even being able to buy his mom her own house. So seeing stories like Eminem or Slim Shady can make us feel inspired and make us feel like maybe we may be in a bad spot now, but in the future, there can be a brighter possibility for us if we choose to make it so. So, uh, so there can be beneficial things about uh, celebrity worship, but there's also, there's also downsides to it, as according to an article called The New Age of Celebrity Worship in CBS in 2006, which suggests that celebrity worship can actually be mentally uh, poor for our mental health. So it can be a cause for low self-esteem or depression. So instead of celebrity worship, let's give it a name. We can call it celebrity respect, and we'll give it a new meaning. So we'll just throw out celebrity worship and we'll just call it celebrity respect, which is essentially taking the idea of a star and what they did to get to, what, to their fame, instead of just worshiping them for their money. Ellen DeGeneres, uh, 
known to most of the world as Jess Cohen, can be worshipped for a lot of things, like her millions of dollars, or her successful TV show, or her beautiful wife Portia de Rossi. But what a lot of people don't know is that Ellen DeGeneres wasn't always accepted as the funny lesbian she is today. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2009, it showed that though she started out with a great, very successful sitcom called Ellen in the 80s, uh, when she opened up about her sexuality and announced it to her fans in hopes that they would be accepting to her just as she was when she was allegedly straight, um, they, her producers and her agent all dropped her, as well as her fans. She lost her entire fan base and didn't gain it again until late 90s. But we can see now that though she had such persecution against who she was, we can see that she is now really famous and everybody loves Ellen. We can identify her as the voice of the lovable Pixar character, Dory, or we can, or we can see her as one of the many faces of, of CoverGirl Beauty products. So, knowing that stars weren't all meant to be, oh, knowing that stars weren't all meant to be stars can be inspiring. But when we forget that they are actual people, we, realize, we, we begin to see them as these unattainable images of wealth. And that's where worship grows. And it makes us wish that we could be like them, but feel like we can't because we don't know how they got there. Um, the difference between worship and respect is a powerful thing. And so the first thing I told you was how we can see our investment in, in the celebrities. And then I told you that knowing your celebrities might not be all that bad before telling you how we can transition from worshiping stars to respecting them. And uh, in the wise words of Miley Cyrus, it isn't always about how fast you get there. It ain't about what's waiting on the other side, it's the climb. Because oftentimes, it's the story of how a celebrity became famous that is more touching and inspiring than the fame itself. 